fell in love with art. It was at the Hermitage Museum. I was with a group of media people and it was during sort of the Cold War period, what was then called Leningrad. We were being pushed round basically and suddenly went into this huge room just full of the most stunning impressionist works. So that made me then really start to study art and when I was on business trips I would pop into famous museums and so on. And then saw this work in a viewing before an auction, it was at Sullivan's actually. Really liked the work, couldn't work out why the prices were so much lower than the better known stuff. I asked one of their executives, said what it's called Modern British Art. It's um, out of fashion and you could build a rather nice collection of a million and a half I think they said. And by sheer serendipity sold the business six months later for a very good price. And then I got, in my normal obsessive way, I got stuck into it. to like it. That's the first thing. And I have to want to look at it again and again because it's absolutely truly beautiful. It might be complicated, it might be shocking, but there's something that keeps drawing you to it. So it's really simple in that sense. Sometimes you can build it around a particular artist, let's say William Roberts or Elizabeth Frank. Um, uh, but other times it would be a theme, so Dreams and Nightmares would be one that we did, which just perfectly captures my uh, liking for the dark. Christianity. One, uh, I think that's just recently got interesting. I mean, there's an awful lot going on about religion at the moment, isn't there? Some from the truly shocking to the completely bored and couldn't care less. What I tend to do is, once we've gone on a theme, then I keep it in my head and say, right, okay, if I see other pieces that fit the theme, then we'll put those in. But to me, they're certainly very different takes on Christianity. But if you look at Hillier, I think it's amazing because I think it was done in the early 50s that um, he's shown people really, uh, as you would expect, cut up. We're seeing Christ on the cross in a contemporary setting. Other people couldn't hear stuff, smoking a ciggy, you've got fag packets, bottles, it's a complete lack of reverence. And some people just walking on over the hill and I thought that's such an amazingly current take on religion, you know, with only 2% of people going to church regularly. And I just, so I just thought it was uncanny that, that he'd captured in 1952, where we are now in 2015. Uh, so I thought that was a superb piece. And then the Housen one, who's been through a lot, and uh, definitely been through a lot, and you can sort of see it, you know, being dragged down into the mire and so on. You know, this is a guy who's got religion late. And as they say, if you get religion late, boy, do you believe, and so on. So I think they're two really, big pieces, but... My career started as a messenger boy, but I do remember going to evening classes at what I 
now realise was is the legendary Central St Martins, but I have no idea that's what it was where I was going to. We just just beaten up old building, and well, one arrived in the evening tired and in Charing Cross, scruffy old Charing Cross Road, you know. But nevertheless, it's a, a world class entity that's, that's moved away from there. But I do I do remember within that there were sort of um, various aspects of the advertising, creative infrastructure that was studied, and there was a piece very much on design, typography. Um, and I think some of that sort of interest in balance um, and layout has uh, sort of stuck with me. And therefore appreciation of draftsmanship, that comes through again and again. You know, I, I may be buying contemporary art, particularly from students and so on, but it's got to have some clear craftsmanship within it. As you know, there's a lot of work where that's just not true at all.